How's it going? You want us just drive that gator over there? Sure. Or wait, I can take it. It's just me and Tom. Huh? It's just me and Tom. Might have a little ground heavy in it. I take pictures of everything, Daryl. I know you do. Got to show people that I actually. I'm sure it is. That's if everything doesn't fall out of the back. Oh, we can die. It only needs to be touching the dipstick. We got, we have different rules around here. If we go by the trash can, we can throw some of this out. Was the oil okay? Yeah. Oh, good deal. You done doing my job yet, Daryl? Huh? You done doing my job yet? Yeah. Okay. Sounds new. Ah, uh, no. Yeah, okay. Gotta put some gas in this thing. Because this one has like a one gallon tank, I think. to a pivot that we put a sprinkler package on the other day. We're going to use this to go along and make sure all the nozzles are okay and tight on them. So we're heading back to the center point to start there to go through and have us one of us will stand in the back of this guy and just kind of put along while the other guy just makes sure that the tips are tight that connect to your uh, pressure regulator I'll kind of explain how a sprinkler package works here in a little bit maybe when it's a little bit more quiet this thing's not not very vlogger friendly should have got that package Good. 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 Not sure how you want to do this one. Just hold up. Do I have to back into them or can you?
think we got it figured out for this second anyway. We're actually going to let that one run since it's been so dry. Uh, that and just to kind of test it out for a while. We'll have to come back out here at night because it still gets pretty cool. You don't want that thing freezing up. To explain a little bit about a sprinkler package on a center pivot system, because Chevy makes a little quieter cab, a little bit quieter cab than, than Gator does. As you know, a center pivot goes in a circle. The inside towers do not need to put on as much water as the outside towers. On a sprinkler package, they're gonna make the inside sprinklers have smaller nozzles, and then the outside ones are gonna have bigger nozzles, just so it's a more even spread of the water. So it's not that each sprinkler is gonna have its own personalized nozzle but there is sections it goes in sections like you might have four to ten of the same nozzles and then they go and then they get to the bigger nozzles and they keep going out progressively to to make that system water fairly consistent turn the radio down turn on the light sometime that thing's a little delayed so I got my tractor in the shop yesterday and I started changing oil in it we tend to do the maintenance stuff ourselves on our tractors this actually went down to John Deere and they inspected it and everything seemed fine. So then we bring it back here and change the oil. One thing we like to do is make sure it gets nice and warm before we change the motor oil. Then we grease it all up, change all the filters, and then hopefully uh, tomorrow I will start, maybe tomorrow, needs a good cab cleaning. And then we will start putting on the tanks. Because when I was uh, changing the oil in here, I took off my fenders. If you notice, I don't have my fenders on right here. So we take these off, it's just four bolts there. And then we'll start slapping the tanks on, on that bracket there. Those brackets back there. They kind of use both these to be able to mount. So getting back to this thing, we haven't got any further since the last video. But one thing I did is it's got these, these connector links. I broke one of them. I broke the little, oh, what do you call it? The little locking lever. It's on one of these guys. Here it is, found it. Like the first thing I do to go put that on is I just pulled it back far enough and it snapped. Found one online that actually does it for you. You just gotta splice it in. I'm using solderless connectors. I, I kind of like to use these ones with heat shrink on both sides. Just keeps the moisture out. Grabs the wire a little bit more. See how it kind of adheres to it. And since we got this while well, I'm in the business. Kind of holds all that together. Now that'll be ready for the next guy.
out. So I figured I'd come out to this TNL pivot that I got and change the oil filter on the hydraulics. Um, but first I wanted to pick up this random jug out of my field. Every once in a while we like to change these hydraulic filters on, on these pivots, so that's what's going to happen here. All right, so got this, guys. I, I spilled some. I spilled some oil. I didn't get it all out right. I'm not a professional, folks. I am a farmer. While I'm out here, I'll I'll grease the pivot point. So on about every pivot point, you're gonna have grease circs because this spins inside of this cuff here or whatever you'd call this. You wanna make sure there's adequate grease in there or else if that locks up, this could twist this pivot or the center point and you don't want that it causes major damage also up there there's a few more grease cirques that you don't want to forget about because if that seizes up too it creates problems we don't want problems there's a couple more on those top ones that i i was filming but i wasn't filming so sometimes that just happens the reason why i came out here first was it's just a little bit chilly to start the big Hanson pivot because we shut them off at night because it gets too cold. Actually went out there last night with the family to shut it off. It's very nice, uh, but I'm gonna go restart it now and let it roll a little bit more here. So I'm heading out here. One of you made the comment the other day about uh, how my brother could have used his cell phone to send me a picture of what the tire looked like. Yeah, sometimes we're not the smartest tools in the tool shed, but uh, I remember this time, because on this pivot, there's a uh, sprinkler that was kind of maybe halfway plugged. It was still putting out a decent amount, but when we were checking it last night before I shut it off, I made sure all of them were working, but I took a picture of it on my cell phone, and I'm gonna go make sure it's cleaned out. Ah, oh boy. You can start to hear pressure up. Really good for the first few towers. But yeah, as you can see how these rotate, hence why around here they get known. I don't know if they're actually called rotators, but they're that's what we tend to call them around here. So let's drive through the pivot and I'll make sure most of the nozzles are working and we'll let her rip for the day. Well, the two I cleared were working. There's some people in the field over there. What are they doing? Don't they know they're supposed to wait for us? Ah, it looks like they're vertical tilling. So a question I got for any of you. My uh, two-way antenna, you can always ever hear it. it. It's always whistling, especially if there's any wind outside. It just makes that horrible whistle sound. And sometimes I'll pick it up, or sometimes the actually the microphone will exaggerate it on some of these things. So. If any of you know like a whistle-free two-way antenna, let me know, please. I beg of you. And with that, we'll conclude this video. So we'll see you guys on the next one. Later. Later.